Hello and welcome to this with tutorial. In this video we are going to make a Twitter feed reader. So what this app is basically going to do is you're going to input a Twitter handle and the app is going to return you a profile picture, the Twitter name, the Twitter handle and the recent tweets. And just one note before we begin, since this is a bigger project I don't explain too much in great detail when I make it but on Friday I will launch the last video which is a pure explanation video where I will go through everything one more time and make everything crystal clear for you. So let's begin. So let's open a new Xcode project, double tap right there, and then I'm going to make it a single view application and I'm going to call it Twitter feed. Click on next, uh, save it somewhere, and now let's jump over to main.storyboard where we are going to lay out our app. And the first thing that we need is a text field because the user will have to be able to search for the user that he wants to view the feeds off. So we're going to have a pretty large search field and then we're going to have the button that's going to trigger the action of searching. So let's drag that wider also and I'm going to call it search or that's going to be the text and I'm going to have uh, make it a blue background in order to match the Twitter colors and a white text just like that and then I'm going to display the user's profile picture and the user's uh, name so if I now search for um, uh, a soccer player and his username then it's going to appear here plus his real Twitter name so you can have a user handle and a user username so we're going to display both and then I'm going to drag in an image view in order to display the profile picture as I mentioned. And I am going to make it 170 by 170 so that it's nice and square. I'm going to let it, uh, let's see, I'm going to keep the width and height. And I'm going to apply this one, let's see, width height. And then uh, let's see that won't work unless I also apply some constraints here. So let's do that also. Keep the width and the height and those two. And now this one should be blue also, which it is. And this one also keep your width and your height and the distance, those two distance right there. Okay, so there we apply some constraints. So everything, everything, everything stays nice and uh, aligned. And then I'm going to drag in a label that's going to display our username. So not only the Twitter handle, but also the username. I'm going to center the text just like that and make it two lines so that we can display Twitter handle and usernames if that goes over multiple lines. So this is the layout that we are going to start with. And now we are going to start dragging in those uh, objects to our view controller so that we can start working with them. And I'm just going to say importing objects. And I'm going to drag in the text or the text field. I'm going to add on my, so I'm sure that it's not taking my text field. And then uh, search button, search. And this is going to be an action because we want an action to be called when we click on it, uh, just like that. And then I'm going to drag in my image view, which I'm going to call my image view. And then I'm going to drag in my label. So these are all the objects that we are going to need right now. Uh, we're going to add on something later, which is going to be the table view that's going to display all the tweets. But right now we're just going to focus on enabling the user to search, doing some error checks, and then we're going to display the profile picture and the Twitter handle and the Twitter name. So let's head over to the, uh, our view controller and start doing some funny stuff inside our search function. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to check if the user has uh, even written something or given us some text because if he hasn't then it's no point in running our other functions and our other operations. So first we are going to check if my text field dot text is not equal to zero. And if that is the case, then we're going to run the rest of our code. 
and then we are going to create the user so we're going to take the text that the user has inputted in the text field extract that and then uh, place that in a user variable so we're going to say let user it's a completely normal variable that we just are calling user and this one is going to be equal to uh, my text field not search field but my text field uh, dot text and then because um, we can't use an as we'll see we can't use spaces that will just lead to a crash this is something that we'll see later on when we have to create the browser in order to get all of the information uh, but we have to remove all the spaces in the text so we have to say dot replace replace let's see replace characters replace occurrences of this one with this one so we're basically removing the spaces and this will allow us to insert this one into the url so that we don't get a crash if we try to launch a url with a space which simply won't work and then we're going to run a function that's going to get us all the information and that function we're going to create right here creating function that that gets all of the stuff so this is going to get us all of the information so the user uh, handle and the profile picture I'm just going to call it the uh, get stuff and let's create it and I have gotten way to use to Java func not function and then we are going to first of all create a URL so the way we are going to uh, get access to all of this information is we're going to take the Twitter and then we are going to add on this username and that will lead us to the user profile uh, if we now open up Chrome let's see this one and then we go to twitter.com and then we can search for any user here really uh, oh it landed on the Swift guide then we're going to take that one so as you'll see we can search for any user uh, Messi a famous football player and as you'll see the username is just uh, put uh, behind the Twitter handle or the Twitter uh, URL in order to get to that profile so if I now write one the Swift guy and search I'm going to get to my profile so what we're going to do is we're going to take twitter.com and then add on the search term that our user used uh, in order to get to that particular profile so we're going to take this one so our URL is going to be equal to a URL made of a string and the string is Twitter plus and then our user see and we are going to ask it for a user which is of type string when we call the function and we're going to pass that to the function when we call it so we're going to say get stuff and we're going to pass it the user variable so now it takes the search term of our user and adds it onto this twitter.com and that will open up a browser for that particular twitter user Let's see there is an error here and we're just going to say that we're sure that we will have a user when we call the function and then we're going to create the task so basically open up the browser so we're going to say let task is equal to url session dot share dot data task with the url and the one we are going to use is let's see we are going to use this one and we are going to get these three variables in return we're going to get data a response and eventually or maybe an error and we're going to pass it our URL that we just created up there and then what we are going to do first of all is we're going to check if we have an error so we're going to say if error is not equal to nil which means we have an error then we're going to do something there else we have had all the success in the world and we can continue with our code but first of all we are going to handle the error so we are going to check if first of all we can get some more information about that error so we are going to say if let error 
message is equal to error. See, error. and then dot localized description, which is um, we access our error right here, and then we can see if we have some more description on that error. And if we do, we are going to display that to our user uh, through our label. So then we're going to say self dot label my label dot text is equal to error message message. And if we don't get a localized description, which means we don't have more information about our error, we're simply going to display self dot a generic um, error message. So we're going to say is equal to there has been an error try again just like that and now we're going to test if this works so we're going to run the application and then we're going to try to turn off the Wi-Fi and see if our error response is working but there's one more thing we have to do before we do that I just realized and that is that we have to run this um, we have to run the uh, when we update our interface we have to run it on the main thread else uh, there can uh, be created some problems that we don't want so always make sure at least when you're operating within a a task or a session a web session that you always update the um, interface on the main thread so the way you do that is we say dispatch async. And then within this code right here, let's see, async, within this piece of code, we are going to write the update of our interface. So the error display message. And one more thing that I forgot, and that is to say, let's see, we have to find the right place. After the task, we have to say task, see, not caps lock, task.resume. And this is simply to start the web browsing session. Um, it's something that's uh, easy to forget, but it's very important else the session won't start and we won't get any output. So let's try to write in some random stuff. Click on search and the internet connection appears to be offline. If we add another line on our label, we will get the whole error message. I'm just going to add four, five rows so that I, ha so that I have it. If someone has a long username, and let's try it again. Make sure our internet connection is off. And then we're going to write something, search, the internet connection appears to be offline. So right now we have our error check in place. So if the Wi-Fi is turned off or any other error um, is occurring, then the user will get to know that. And if we don't get a specific error message, we're just going to uh, display a generic, there has been an error try again message.